Previously on BBR Season 7, after a hard fought battle with ups and downs, having lost Orgopon to a well played Palafin and losing Gouching Fire due to a combination of recoil and rocky helmet, it looked difficult for a hero to prevail. But Necrozma once again stepped up and wanted to prove its worth. A well timed Morning Sun and a couple of coal mines later, and Necrozma was ready to wreak havoc, not only taking out one, but two dark types in the process. He managed to sweep three mons before the last one fell to Diancy's dying effort in spikes. With his newfound trust in each other, the team takes on a new challenge, but in order to feel better prepared for this journey ahead, backup and new blood must be introduced. So we say farewell to Rotom Wash, Iron Crown, Mienxia, Miss Magius, and with a tear running down our cheek, we have to bid farewell to young Munchlax. May he forever be in our hearts. To fill out their shoes, in comes Galarian Zapdos, Venusaur, Ninetales, and Wigglytuff. Can this new band of brothers and sisters pull through and achieve victory? Find out in today's BBR Season 7 Battle vs. CB Marcus. Alright, so we have for week 3 of the BBR. There's gonna be a team build up before the match. Today, we the main guys are going up against the Rose City Rosalia's coach by CB Marcus. Not only is Marcus an incredibly good battler, he's also a guy behind a lot of stuff you see within the draft scene. So definitely go check him out in the description down below. And Marcus also has an incredibly scary team. So it consists of Garchomp, Elance Loking, Asomero, Superior, Moltres, Roaring Moon, Mew, Palma, which is his Terra Captain with Electric and Fighting, Fortress, and Porygon. Now some of the biggest threats we probably have to watch out for is going to be Garchomp, Roaring Moon, and Palma. I think those three can be really, really good into a team Garchomp because it can either be hazard stacking, but even just offensive Garchomp because we have a pretty decent ground weakness on our team. It's decently scary. Also spoilers, we're not bringing Earthworm. And even if we brought Earthworm, Garchomp can play around that by having Fire Blast. Now I think Roaring Moon can be really, really scary into a team because we can bring Sun and spoiler, we might be bringing Sun. Um, and that makes Roaring Moon really, really strong. It's faster than the entire team, so I'm expecting either maybe a Choice Bandit or an Attack Boosting Roaring Moon with potential DD if it's Attack Boosting. Either way, I think Roaring Moon is really, really good into a team, so we definitely have to kind of play around and make sure our checks doesn't die too early. And then Paw Mod. Paw Mod with Terra is actually an incredibly scary Terra Captain. If it's Terra Electra, it can actually spam Double Shock. Double Shock is not awful into his team. I do think Terra Fighting in this specific matchup is a little bit better just being able to Hit Dawn Fan with Terrifying Close Combat. I think it might actually become a 2 hit KO, or it's at least close with that. And generally, our Fighting Resist are typically on the more offensive side. Like, Necrozma can be very bulky defensively if we needed to. But Glaren Sapdos and Venusaur are not the most. Glaren Sapdos has decent bulk. If it had Roost, it would be an incredibly good defensive piece. But because it didn't have Roost, it doesn't have any longevity. And Venusaur probably would be one of our better counters to Palmer specifically. But I don't think Venusaur defensively at all in this match really holds up because Moltres comes in on it pretty easily. I think offensively Venusaur would be much, much better. I think we have slight matchup advantage because our Sun is pretty strong into him. But I think Marcus has a more clear cut Mon that can win in Roaring Moons. I think this is going to be a very difficult matchup. So with all that, I guess we should just hit into a team. First on our team, as you can see here, we have Reptar, the Gouching Fire, finally getting to play in his son with heavy duty boots, photosynthesis, untold in HP, 252 in attack, once per death, 104 in speed with a jolly nature, heat crash, dragon claw, morning sun, and dragon dance. We are gonna see if we can get this bad boy to win. He is extremely bulky, and Margaret basically doesn't have anything that can two hit KO it or Oko it besides Garchomp, Roaring Moon. Palmoth, I get can two hit KO it, but Palmoth, I would just kill back, so it's not that big of an issue. Basically, what I'm trying to get at is, I can set up a D-Dance on a lot of mons. I can set up a Moltres, Superior, Asomero, Galarian, Slowking, Mew, Fortress. All of those mons, barring they don't have stuff like Thunder Wave. So, Marcus does have a lot of mons to learn stuff like Thunder Wave and other ways to deteriorate. What your opponent wants to do is we don't have to scout out for that. Make sure we don't get paralyzed. But realistically, I think Garage Fact can be really good as a win con this matchup. That's why we bring this set. Next up, we have Bulbzilla, the first entry of our new mons. It's going to be Venus of Life Orb. Overfill, 13 HP, 248 in special attack, 228 in speed with 10 minute nature. Rugging Energy Ball, Earth Power, Sludge, and Grow. Pretty, pretty standard, straightforward Venus also, but it just kind of goes in here. We only really need Dual Stab if it wasn't for the um, Fortress or the Glow King. Those are the two monsters we kind of need Earth Power for. And realistically, you can also make the argument that we don't need Energy Ball. Grass Movers are not that great into Marcus with Moltres, Moon. Gloking, but it is the hardest hitting move we have for the Garchomp. And being able to hit Garchomp can be very, very important. That's why we're bringing Energy Ball. 
Otherwise, there's an argument for bringing out Elite Seed of Synthesis to keep us so healthy, but I do believe Venusaur is really, really strong with this set. If we can set it up at the end, it can win, but it can also just help break mid game if we need to. Next up, we have B back cutie, then a crossbow with Life Orb once again. Prison Armor, 216 HP, 152 in attack, 32 in defense, 108 in speed, sorry. But then Adam and Nature, Excessor Heat Wave, Folding Geyser, and Morning Sun. We are just a pure breaking the crossbow this week. We're not here to win, we are here to just nuke, nuke, and nuke. Running Excessor because it hits the two monsters that kind of appreciate Photon Geyser very well, and that is being Roaring Moon. And that is being Mew. The third mod I can appreciate a Photon Geyser would be Fortress, but we have Heat Wave for that. Heat Wave should oak away Fortress always, pretty much, unless he's Ogre Perry. And Excessor should be a two hit K1 Mew, unless it's like full max physically defensive, which it could be. It could very well be. And then Photon Geyser is really good into everything else. Uh, because Photon Geyser doesn't make contact, it can be clicked on Moltres without the big of an issue. However, there are some scenarios when the Crossman can struggle with breaking. If it's a very physically defensive uh, Galarian Sloking, it can probably eat pretty much anything we go for. But we can at least do enough damage that we can force it to heal, right? So that's kind of the idea behind the Crossman. Plus, he might not even have slack off on Galarian Sloking. So if we can hit it, we hit more than Regenerator can do. We kind of will whittle it down slowly. I think the Crossman is really good in this matchup as just coming in. Breaking, we have Morning Sun for longe longevity if we really need to. And all, I'm very happy about this set. Next up, we have our second part of the Sun Core being Kurama with 9 tails, heavy duty boots, drought, 248 HP, 168 in speed, 92 in speed with a timber nature, fire blast, paint spit, a tom pass, and will o wisp. The reason for the bit more bulky speed uh, build 9 tails here is because of the superior. I don't think superior is coming. We have really good monsters in superior. Garching Fire, 4 times resist Leaf Storm, Venus all 4 times resist Leaf Storm. Gapdos resisted, Nine Tails resisted. Like we have so many mods that work very well into Superior. But in case it does come, I do want a mod that can at least switch into it. This can also switch into a Moltres that doesn't have Scorching Sands. I do think Moltres very well, very much will have Scorching Sands in the matchup. But if it doesn't, this works. This also switches into sp Special Mew, switches into Glow King in a lot of scenarios. And we can just Baton Pass out. That is what this mod does. It comes in, it clicks Baton Pass. It comes in, it clicks Baton Pass. I'm only ever clicking Fire Blast if I think I can kill. All I'm clicking well is if I'm predicting a Roaring Moon coming in or something like that. Pain Split is just in case of emergency. Like it's if we're really low, there's a mom with a lot of health unknown coming in or is in front of me. I can Pain Split, get a lot of health, wiggle them down. But basically, this is a Baton Pass mod. That is what it is. That is what it is here for. Next up, we have Kira the Dancy with Leftovers, Clear Body, 240 in HP, 252 in Defense, 16 Speed with a Bold Nature, Moon Blast, Power Gem, Spikes, and Baton Pass. And if you think you've seen this set before, it's because you very much have. You've seen a very similar set last week. We ran pretty much the exact same set, except I think, believe it was Spidef instead of Physically Defensive. But all the moves were the same. This is just a really good Diancy set. I really like it. Moonblast, uh, Fairy Boost, Terra Fairy Boosted Moonblast still hits very hard from a defensive set. Power Gem is just really good in this matchup. He has a lot of relatively rock weak wands. So that's why I'm kind of confident in bringing this. And if we can get Spikes up, that's a good chip. Garchomp, I don't think it's going to be heavy duty boots. I don't think Glow King necessarily is heavy duty boots. I think Fortress, you know, I think a lot of the mods can take Spike Chip. And realistically, on, the only thing Rocks would be good against would be a Moltres. But I also think the Moltres very much will have, have heavy duty boots. So that's why I don't think Rocks necessarily are worth it on Diancy. I think Spikes is just a little better. Now we have Baton Pass because, you know, momentum is really good. This match up specifically, if we can Baton Pass into a Gouching Fire and Sun is still up, we can just kind of either DD or get a kill. Gouching Fire is that strong, by the way. <laughs> And lastly on our team this week, we have Snubbleupagus, the Dawn Fan, Rocky Helmet, Sturdy, 248 HP, 252 in defense, 8 in sp speed with an Impus Nature. Rabbit Spin, Ice Spin, Earthquake, and Stealth Rock. So this is where the Rock's growing is because, is because I think Rock's on Dawn Fan is just sli is slightly better. I think he can get them up. Well, I think he can get Rock's up once where I think Diancia actually has multiple opportunities to get off spikes if you really need to. Now we're rocking Spin, Spinner, plus Earthquake. This should hit pretty much the entirety of his team. Moltres is kind of annoying with this set. We don't really hit that well. Ice Spinner is neutral and it doesn't do that much. But realistically, Moltres, we can kind of switch into with a couple of mons. Gouging Fire can actually switch into Moltres if we really needed to. And Dawnfan is also mostly here for Garchomp and Roaring Moon. If both are there, I have to figure out between Diancy and Dawnfan which one takes on which one. It's probably most likely going to be Diancy takes on Roaring Moon, Dawnfan takes on, takes on Garchomp. But realistically, I just think having a physical defense from Dawnfan here is really good. He has a lot of very physically good offensive mods is our team so having a the strong mod here is just really really nice that is going to be our full team as you can see a gouging fire venus on the cross mat diancy nine tails and don fan as always if you like the video so far make sure to leave a like on the video leave a comment with thought of the team below and subscribe to the channel for future videos i'm not hitting to bell so see ya just
a little bit. All right, so we're here with BBR week three battle. We're going up against CB Marcus, CB Marcus, sorry, coach of the Rose City Rosalia. So, brought the Garcham, the Roaring Moon, Glow King, Meow, Mew, not Meow, Mew, Moltres, and Palmer. Pretty much what I expected. I thought maybe Arsenal Merrill, maybe Superior could come, but this, these were basically the things I thought would come. Now, I'm not 100% sure what to lead with. I think Mew is a good lead for him. Like, I don't think he loses a whole lot by it. I don't do the most damage. I could get my rocks up. He doesn't have removal. I'm also a little bit afraid that he's going to has a stack me. Uh, I don't think has a stack is bad into me. And preserving Dawn fan health can be pretty important. I actually think I might just go nine tails, honestly. I might lead nine. Uh, nine tails is really bad into Garchomp, though. I'm going to lead Dawn fan and then we'll take it from there. Uh, yeah, I don't have a good lead in this matchup, really. I don't feel like I could lead in a cross, might just go for broke. But I'm just gonna lead Don fans. Good luck, Fanta Marcus. This is gonna be a very interesting game. Um, we are finally, we after our team changes, we're finally having a true sun team with our Gouching Fire. We also brought the Venusaur. Venusaur can be a good cleaner at the end. I'm a little scared about his Roaring Moon. Um, I if I can, I really want to scout what item it is, but I feel like he's gonna hold it back until he knows he can win with it. It's the Moltres lead. Um. Hmm. All right, not what I would have liked, but not horribly. Mm, I say that flamethrower does a lot. Like even if he like no investment, flamethrower does a lot. He could have Willow Wisp. Am I willing to take this risk? Um, with Roaring Moon and Gotcha being there, I kind of need Donphan decently healthy. He could just U-turn. I kind of want to swap into Nine Tails and then Baton Pass. How much does Scorching Sands do? I know Ninetales gives him Sun. Could also just go Diancy. Actually, let's just go Diancy. That's probably just as easy. Didn't expect the Moltres, but it makes sense. It's a good U-turn pivot. It can pivot on all my slow mons. It can just... Um, it hits a decent chunk. Like, it hits the lead a random Venusaur, you know? Plain for So we don't take too much from that. Yeah, take a little bit, but not too much. No burn. No burn. Perfect. Um, I'm going to... I... Do I have a reason to... Oh, yeah, wait, let me pull up. Yeah, now I can actually look at his team. <laughs> Do I have a reason to Terra immediately? I kind of don't. I kind of just want to get Spikes up. Because uh, if I get Spikes up, I can then... If I Spike... Like, it, it's going to stay, right? And it hits... Yeah, let's just... Let's just Spike. Uh, I guess... Actually, I said he has no removal. He does have Scorching Sand. I kind of figured he would have... That does a lot. Is he often? It's that's gotta be offensive then, right? Yeah, no, that's like super offensive. Okay, I should have called the flamethrower damn. Actually, wait, how much? Did he crit me? I'm so confused how that did so much. Like I'm I don't have my terra clicked or anything. Even max modest shouldn't do that much. I'm so confused how that did that how it did that much. I'm so confused. Like, Expert Belt? Like, he did well over... Expert Belt, maybe? Um, okay. Not what I would have wanted. Um, I guess I'll Terra and Power Gem. Yeah, Luke's and Diancy early on is really, really bad. It opens up his Roaring Moon so much more. Yeah, he's not Life Orb. He didn't take Life Orb damage. I guess I'll Terra, because I should maybe be able to live one more. And then I'll Power Gem. Yeah, I guess. Uh, wow, that did way more than I thought it was gonna do. Like I really did. That didn't seem like it was gonna do that much. Like I'm gonna be honest. Now, if I if I can lift this and get rid of the Moltres, that does also, that does also mean our Gouging Fire is like way better. Because Moltres is the best Gouging Fire switch. Like there's no debate there. Do I lift this? Okay, I do. I do. I do. I do. I do. This should kill him. This should kill him. Unless he's sass. He could be sassly. He gets the burn. That's fine. It's, he hit it twice. It's a 30% chance each time. Plus, he hit us with a flame throws. I think it's like fine. It evens out more or less. That's lead. It is that's lead. Okay. I mean, that's not the worst, honestly. Like, it's not the worst. I have the Moltres down to one. Now, with him being kind of offensive like this, I think I should also assume he's very, very fast then. Also, yeah, I still don't... I still don't quite get how... Yeah, I still don't quite get how he did that much with the first one when he's Sash. It, it shouldn't have done that much. Like, Flamethrower should have done about 20. 
And then, yeah, he should have done about like 60, 65 ma max, but I was like at red. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I should. Hmm, I don't know. It, that seemed weird. It seemed a little weird to me. Uh, I have no reason to preserve my Dante if he lets me. The problem is this thing is if he has speed on this, it is probably faster than the entirety of my team because my team is very slow this week. Um, I'll get another spike if he for some reason lets me. Hill wins. Okay. I... This is not the worst because I also let a Tailwind turn go. He could have defog, could very well have defog. I think Moltres still has defog, right? It does not. No, my D spikes up up to stay. So getting to the second last spike is not bad. Now, unfortunately, the burn will mitigate our leftovers. Otherwise, we actually could maybe slowly climb up a little bit. Maybe we could take another one. Though he can just click flame throw. He already knows where we are. Um, my assumption here is going to be that he set up the Tailwind for his Palma. Okay. Uh, this is kind of annoying because the crossbow is also physical, so I don't want to risk getting burned. How much does nine tails take? Like, I'm just thinking for after this, right? He's also faster than my Venus one. I have to remember that. And nine tails takes a good chunk. Um, I'll spike again because if he doesn't attack me again, I'll. He could be very. He could have been roost. I guess that is kind of risky. He could very well have been Roost. No, no, I just realized in my head he could very well have been Roost. <laughs> I don't know why I didn't think about Roost. Okay, so we loot Diancy. That's not great, but I mean, we got two laps of spikes up and we got Moltres down to one. Um, He has the Tailwind up. I have to, he, he's like 100% going to be faster than whatever I go into. So I have to just realize, whatever I go into has to take a lot of damage. So I'm just kind of figuring out what I can live with taking the most damage. I think Nine Tails, because Nine Tails realistically doesn't do that much damage. You risk not hitting the flame for always is not great. I don't have ice shot, I have ice spinner, which is unfortunate. Gouching fire. How much does my old pal la gouching of the fire do? Yeah, no, he takes way too much as well. I think I think going the cross is probably the better. If he has I think I can live with the damage on the cross more. Because I, it's more so I don't want to risk missing with nine tails. If I had like flame thrower, that's a different thing, right? Uh, I'm just gonna throw it on Geyser. As far as I look up, throw it on Geyser does not make contact. Okay, I'm not risking heat wave misses. He's gonna hit me with a very strong flame thrower here, which is very unfortunate. Yeah, it does about half. Um, he, oh my god, he got the burn on my physical necros. My, you are hitting. Oh, that's really that's a really bad burn. That's a really bad burn for me. That is really really bad. I'm a life orb as well, so I'm taking so much damage here. Oh, that's so bad. That is really really that makes the cross my not a break anymore. Oh no. Oh, you are joking. Oh, that okay. That burn kind of sucks. That burn sucks like a lot. Um, I guess we get rid of the Moltres. I'll take that. Ah, oh, that's really... Mm, that's unfortunate. That 10% burn, it's really, really, really annoying. I think I think Flamethrower is only 10, right? I'm pretty sure. Okay, so Tailwind is also still up. So, let me just look here. Tailwind is up for one more turn, but this thing also outspeeds like... Um, because I'm... I mean, he doesn't know for certain if I'm physical or special, right? Could he just be soul stand skill? He actually could just be soul stand skill shot here, couldn't he? Because skill shot also bypasses Dawn Plants 30. Am I just losing like turn one here? Are we serious? Um, that is so obnoxious. Hmm. Because burn, I do. Yeah, he could also just get. He can also just get hassles up. Um, I'm just gonna. I don't know if this is the correct play, but I'm just gonna. Yeah, he so he does skills. He's not so. He so he hasn't soul stands at least. I can live with that. Just have to let him cross my go. It's physical. It, he didn't like. He doesn't. Okay, so he, I, I'm assuming this is a loaded dice. He didn't soul stance. That's very nice because he doesn't know I'm physical or special, right? That's kind of uh, the reason why this felt like decently good. Now, Dawn Fan, even if he gets all five hits, takes it out now because of the... And, and like, he can't be sassed because of it, so... I guess, yeah, and Tailwind also peter out, but I just go Dawn Fan and I just click Ice Spinner. I don't have a reason to knock the Ice Spinner. Um, it is what it is. Man. 
That burn on Necrozma so I probably would have considered saving Necrozma if it wasn't for... Um... You know, Don Donphan would have... I could have came in on 8 if I really need to, but we would have burned Necrozma. I don't think it's worth it risking him sword standing there. Getting the little bit of chip could have helped in the long run. Um, I just Ice Spinner, even if it switches, it's fine. I get a little bit of chip on something. He doesn't have Ice Resist. Um, I shot here would have been really good, actually. <laughs> I won't lie, I shot would have been amazing. <laughs> I'm assuming this is a SD scale shot. Like, I'm not even gonna lie, I think this is SD scale shot. Because, um, ground in general is really good into my team. I, I think it's loaded dice. He got the four hits, the screams loaded dice. He could have gotten lucky. Don't get me wrong, he very much just gotten lucky. But for now, I'm gonna assume loaded dice. If he's Yachi Berry, that's kind of bad for me. So he does withdraw. Yeah, I figured he would. Let's see, what are you going to mute? I, I kind of figured mute was like the switch. Hurts by spikes. Okay, so the spikes are definitely put in and work. I'll take that. That did absolutely nothing. <laughs> and he is leftovers. Okay, I think my play is just nine tails, baton pass, and we go from there. I think. I, I think preserving sturdy on Dawnfang could be really good. Now, the problem is... He's probably gonna get hassles up here, but I still think I'm just gonna go nine tails. Like nine tails is not a switch to Mew by any means. Don't get me wrong, it is by no means a switch to Mew. But I, I think I just kind of have to do it, have to do it for now. But that burn on um, Super Fangs, he gets half. Mm -hmm. uh, if this thing is rocking earthquake, how does nine tails take that? Mm -hmm. If it's no antagonist, we live. But I don't know if this is antagonist or not. Ah. He's left. I know he's left though. Um What I do? What I, do? I have two spikes up which is going to give him really good damage. I want a baton pass so badly and just hoping he doesn't have. But EQ on Mew could very well be um I'm sitting at what 175 which is like it should be my exact half because that's you know how Super Fang works. If he's invested, Earthquake just takes me out clean. I can't do anything about it. Um, but if he's super fang, he's probably also more so support. This is so risky, but I'm gonna baton pass. I need to try and create... So he gets spikes up himself. That's fine. Gouching is... Um, gouching fire is... Uh, boots. I'm not that worried about that. You get the baton pass off. Um, I probably just go... We have sun up, so I probably just go gouching and hit the heat crash. And then... We'll see. <laughs> we'll see what it does. We'll see what it do. Could D-Dance. Uh, how many Sun Turns are, are there? Could D-Dance. Like very... Yeah, I get, I get an I get an attack boost here. Yeah. An attack boosting. Um, If he's physically defensive, he actually probably doesn't die to this. He could be like Thunder Waves, so that's really risky. He probably is faster than me. He was faster than my Ninetales. How fast is my Ninetales again? 284. Yeah, no, he's definitely faster because uh, he. Uh, I can DD on. How many how many sun turns are there? I have harsh sunlight for three more turns. I'm just gonna heat crash. I'm just gonna get my damage. We we may we go for like a Venusaur in game probably because Venusaur is not looking horrible. If I can get a setup of on like a guard chomp or like a um. This is not that bad, honestly, because what I'll do is I'll Morning Sun. I'll get the boosted Morning Sun. Just to get myself like a little bit healthier. So I'll Morning Sun, get the boosted Morning Sun. Because that, that out heals what he does to me. Actually, that's fine. Actually, I'll take that. Definitely. That, that does like literally less. Then he'll he'll probably super fang here, which is like it's kind of annoying, but I'll live with it. Um, do I declaw on the prediction? Garchon might come in, on like a heat crash. I think I do. In case Garchon comes in, a declaw. Then again, I don't want to reveal I'm not scale shot potentially. Do I care about that actually? No, I'm just gonna declaw. He probably super fangs here. Miss, miss. Oh my god, that's that's huge. I'm sorry, Marcus, but that's huge. Holy hell. Okay, that kind of makes up for the 10% uh, miss, I guess. Uh, the 10% burn, I guess. I, it, it's like, 
I don't know which one is bigger. This might be bigger because having a very healthy uh, gouging fire is super good for me. Plus, now that um, now that there's no more like sun up, I mean he goes Garchomp, right? Because Garchomp outspeeds, and but I, I go Dawn Fan, right? I, get, I mean I, I just have to go Dawn Fan. Garchomp is a is a huge issue. He does take spikes every time, which is very nice. Um, I still just have to go Dawn Fan, I think. Like, I don't... There's no way he two-shots me, even with one layer of spike. I believe he has one layer of spike up, right? Um, status... Yeah, I have two spikes. He has one spike, yeah. Um, I'm just gonna quickly... Does Gouching, like, eat this? Not really. If he's loaded dice and get all five, he can actually just straight-up kill me. Which is not great. So, yeah, I'm just gonna go Dawn Fan here. Um, we're not in a great position, but we're not in a horrible position. Uh, we can potentially still win this. The Paw Moth is really, really scary at this point because we lost the Anti so, so early. Scale shot, because he just does just go for the Scale Shot, which is interesting. I'm not sure why he's Scale Shotting this fight. I mean, he's getting damage off on uh, the Dark Man. Yes, this looks very loaded dice. That did five. I should have been leftovers. I didn't... Yeah, because I, I kind of, in a sense, forgot that... Um, okay, guard. I'm sitting at 186. I feel like... Is he adamant? I feel like that is doing so much. I mean, I took a spike. Okay, he should not be able to, to kill me. Minus one defense effect. does 55 to 65. He's sitting at 50, 55, 66. I have to ice spin. I just have to do it. I want a rabbit spin on the wild play, but I'm going to ice spinner because I don't get. Okay, it doesn't kill. Oh, we get rid of Gachamp. The Lord. Plus, that he gets Rocky Helmet here. We might get a double down here, which is like not the greatest, but not the worst. Because I, I take Rubskin here. Not Blah, guess. Does he live? Okay, so Garchomp dies. That is like, it's good. But he also has like both, both all of my physical walls are dead. Like Moon at this point is so scary moon is very like moon in general i knew was going to be really scary into my team i like percent health so yeah so he goes moon now okay Are you dd Are you dd i mean no matter what i guess i just ice spinner here yeah because he can at max uh but if he's if he dds and he gets the speed booster that's really bad he wasn't he wasn't a booster energy, a booster speed. Well, I lived on one. Well, that's after the rough skin. That wasn't the, the hit. And that was after the rough skin. I was like, huh? I I spin. I just if he wants to set up, they just decoys. That's fine. He takes helmet here, so I'll take that. Yeah, no, I absolutely take that. Um, if he is choice banded, if we just go by the premise that he's banded, right? Give me out. How much does Dragon Claw do to? Just like what there is also Don Van Dyde. So there is Moon, Paul Mod, Glow King. So Gouching class looks pretty fucking good. Uh, Gouching will die because he's. Yeah, Ninetales will die. How much does Venusaur take? Bandit? Uh, because of the one spike, I actually think Bandit Declaw. Okay, it's a. Uh, okay, wait, 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 wait. It's a Venusaur. Because I'm thinking I go Ninetales. Oh, but if I give him the attack boost, actually, if he's attack boosting. Oh. It's really bad. I don't have any damage on him, so I... Um, <laughs> um... I think I have to go Ninetales. I think it's my only play. I think it is. Ah, uh, I knew that I knew Roaring Moon was going to be... I misplayed a little bit with Diancy early on. I guess I should have just teared immediately, but... I... That Scorching Channel also did so much. Okay, so what is it? It's... Speed. Okay. So he, I think he's banded speed, is my guess. Which means uh, Venusaur would live. Oh my god, there's a chance he just straight up kills me. Um, I'll Willow, unlike uh, him being DD. No, it's just deep. I think it's banded. I think it's banded. Uh, Gouging Fire just dies. Uh, we got, I already have damage. I already have. I have to go Venu. 
I have to go Vino. He got a speed boost, so he can at max be like just banded that is his highest. Um, I grow because I am faster than this thing. If I because if I live, that is what I need. Do I grow? Because yeah, Sludge Bomb can never kill here anyway. I grow. I am faster. This is a roll. It's scary. Um, does Earth Power kill? He's sitting at, um, sitting at 50, 55, 60, 65. You know, he's sitting above 65. Yeah, I cannot Earth Power. I have to Sludge Bomb. If he goes Glow King here, that is masterfully played. That is so well played. Like, that is so well played. If he goes, um, Glow King him, that is really good played. I'm a little annoyed I'm a Life Orb. If I wasn't Life Orb, I could, like, I could have gotten out of this, I think. Because I lost, I lost, uh, nine tails. <laughs> He could be, uh, no, with the damage he just did, I think that confirms he's banded. So if I can get the Scourging Fire plus one outspeed moon outside of the sun, I think, he, I think we do. Right, yeah, we do. So if I can get the plus one with Gouching, Gouching is looking really, really good. Like, it's looking really good. He should go Glow King here, I feel like. I don't think he loses anything by it. Man, do I have a synthesis? Hmm. Yeah, no, he does. I guess I should have clicked, I should have clicked Earth Power on, like, the mid-ground play. Like, well, now if I do that and he stays in, I just lose. Oh, he Palmer. Say Sax Palmer. Okay, say Sax Palmer. I can actually kind of live with that potential. Oh, uh, mm, I died to this. He go back into Roaring Moon. I think, he, I think he got this. I need to not die to the Life Orb here. I do. Yeah, I thought so. <laughs> oh, I wish I wasn't Life Orb. No, actually, then the, man, I got a little bit. I, like, I got unlucky. I don't know. Is he? Got, he just goes Moon here, right? Yeah. He, he has speed, I have attack. So, I mean... I mean, he just Dragon Claws, right? No reason not to. I'm sitting with 343. Oh, yeah. No, it's a guaranteed Oko. I... No, actually, wait, wait, wait. By being speed booster, he's only 220 max. Have very small chance to live. Um, do I DD? I think <laughs> I want to DD so bad. Like I want to DD really bad. Like if I DD, then I'm also plus one in for Glow King. I think, and if I DD, I'm no. He gets the, he has the speed boost. I can't DD. Oh my god! I'm glad I just realized that. I just had to decall. Hope I live somehow. Dragon Claw. I don't. I don't think I live. Yeah, no. Oh man, I'm so like. Mm. That's it. I don't know. Like, I don't think I misplayed. I think I got really unlucky with the uh, the necrosma. Getting burned on that flamethrower was so annoying. It just man, he wasn't worth saving, you know. Because like, I could I could have gone down fan and still have like a pretty because like a pretty bulky necrosma definitely takes the dragon claw. Yeah. Oh, that's so annoying. Oh man, I. I, I don't know what I, exactly I could have gone. I, I could have played Diancie a little bit different. I know that much. But other than that, I really don't see what I could have done that much different. Ah, the... I don't, like, I don't know. Yeah, I guess I'll just end it there. Like, I knew the moon was going to be a massive issue. So letting Diancie take that much shit was probably pretty bad. Him being offensive mode was not something I had for i guess i guess it's, mm, yeah all right i'm just gonna end it here. i'm just gonna wobble in my own words here um gg tamagas he played very well like he played as you should he played to his out Roaring moon was probably his massive, the, the best mana like in his team like i knew it was gonna come i knew it was gonna be a massive issue yeah as always if you like the video make sure to leave a like on the video leave a comment with the bell and subscribe to channel for future videos and i'll head up sorry hello as always, if you like the video, make sure to leave a like on the video, leave a comment with the bell, and subscribe to the channel for future videos. I'll now head out. The peace, YouTube.